Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragonfly Engineering. So this week we're going to talk about the second mold in this, this double mold series. Again, this is the, the frame with the door, the square door and the square frame that kind of fit together. Well, this week we're going to focus on the second one that we're going to build. And now this guy is the one that has the two hydraulic air actuated core pins that pull out. and a traditional eject on the, on the B side with spring returns. So right soon you're gonna hear the, the little air cylinders push the core, core pins in to the left and right side, that little sound right there. So we're gonna show how we machine this mold and assemble it, so hope you enjoy and thanks for watching. So I'm doing a voiceover for the first six minutes or so of this, of this video, mostly because when I was doing this work with assembling this mold. I had headphones on and there was milling machines running in the background, so it didn't really make sense to do audio live. But here you can see I'm removing the duct tape mask where I bead blasted the finish. And here I actually turned a couple of steel posts, which are called pedestals. And these pedestals are useful to, to support the center part of your mold. So if you imagine a large amount of plastic being injected in the middle of your mold, that the cantilever from the mold plate itself can actually dump down into the center area of your mold or, or deflect. So by adding these steel posts, and I just screw those in with some quarter 20 bolts or approximately M6 bolts, those two pedestals will help support the middle part of your mold so that it, you don't get flexure in the three inch or 75 millimeter plate. So here you can see how I'm effectively going to check and clean off everything and add the first ejector plate. And you can see that there's clearance holes in the ejector plate because the ejector plate actually slides uh, or moves in and out around the pedestals. So here I'm just adding the, the guide pins for the ejector plate back and you got to make sure all the bead blasting grit is out of your mold when you reinsert all these ejector pins, or not ejector pins, but guide pins. And here I'm adding a little bit of oil and cleaning out any of the uh, the grit from the from the bead blasting process. I do have some old soda, like baking soda, in the bead blasting cabinet. So there's like a fine powder film, which I really need to change out at some point. Here I'm starting to add the ejector pins themselves to the to the to the top plate of the ejector plate, and and I'm a basically just making sure everything fits. All the pins slide in easily. You, you don't want any pins to be uh, semi jammed up in the aluminum because like that one right there where I kind of hit it with my palm because it'll just start galling up. So I think off camera I, I fixed that that pin. I probably just ran a, a, uh, a reamer through there. Let's see if I actually kept that fix in. Uh, maybe not. So now here's the back of the ejector plate, and this is what actually pinches all the ejector pins into the final location, and you just basically just bolt the back plate of the ejector plate system on, and you capture all the ejector pins in there. You want these to be pretty tight and pretty robustly tightened, because as you cycle your molding machine, things that are not tight start to loosen up on you. All right, so here I am. Now I am removing the ejector plate because one thing that I'm adding to this mold is spring returns. So I basically I did a dry fit on everything for the ejector plate to make sure that it traveled fully. And when the plate is actually up against the back of the mold, you, you, you can wind up with basically zero tolerance situation. So normally the ejector plate doesn't go all the way to the back of the mold so you don't like close out your, your tolerance slot with your pins and guide pins. And here you can see I'm now adding the spring returns for the ejector plate. And that is the actual kind of natural position for the ejector plate itself. It, uh, it can't actually go all the way to the back of the mold because the springs and the, com and the compressed configuration won't allow it to go to the point where it will jam up from all the pins having no no clearance left. So here I'm, I'm tightening down the mold and whacking it with a brass hammer to really drive those assembly bolts home. And then that's the back side of the mold. 
And here is the front side, and it's still got some of the from the soda grit from uh, from the bead blast finishing. And I'm hammering in the guide pins, the main mold guide pins. And these all came as a set from American Quality Mold. And those steel pins basically line up with the hard steel guide um, bushings in the, the B side of the mold. Here I'm just kind of whacking them in place. And I checked the origin, the original origin stamped on the mold kit, again from American Quality Mold. We make these in Indiana, uh, uh, the state of Indiana in the United States. Here I'm lubing up all the guide pins so that we uh, it's a little easier to guide them in. But usually with these molds, when you first start the guide pins into the bushings, it, it uh, instantly locks up. So you kind of have to you have to start the pins to be square and then push them in like I did there. So now I'm adding the side core poles, and this is a pancake air cylinder. So it's basically a large diameter but but uh, small travel. And I've got three bolts that basically are screws. I think they were M4 screws that basically just screw through the whole pancake cylinder and into threaded holes on the side of the mold, which which was machined in the last episode where all of this machining work was done. So if you haven't seen all the machining of this, of these molds, then check out previous episodes. Now I'm adding the air cylinder or the air hoses with quick disconnect or push to connect um, hose tubes. And now this is the back plate for the A side of the mold, which basically creates the ledge that you can clamp your mold into the molding machine and the alignment ring for your uh, alignment ring to, to align the, the mold into the alignment hole in your molding machine's A side. It also allows for the injection unit to pass through. We actually have a deep injection unit, so that's a deep hole there, so that the injection unit of the molding machine injects directly into the cavity of the mold itself with basically no no sprue or anything. So it's kind of like a integrated hot runner where the molding machine just dumps right into the cavity. That way you don't have to trim off sprues or runners or anything in these parts. They just, they're done when you shoot them. All right, now I'm adding to the lid mold, which maybe you can't see here, the hydraulic core pole, which basically is a single acting hydraulic cylinder with a spring return and I bought this on Amazon it's actually a, a jack cylinder like a car jack cylinder like a small travel but then I'm reinforcing the um, jack with that big steel bridge across the top to keep it down against the mold because it does have a, a push force of I think six tons uh, again this is full hydraulic so it's not like weak air cylinders so you really have to hold these these pistons in place and that's why there's only one hose there. Okay, so we get back to uh, loading the part. This, uh, we're in the dual shot molding machine. And this forward mold is basically just a flat door with texture on the finished side, which is on the left side over here. And it also has the integrated A side ejectors using pneumatic uh, uh, ejector pins that uh, we've done in a previous mold. So I've done that again But this one is going to be a little more interesting because it has some integrated side poles with some cam Actuated pins and heel blocks on the B side. So when this mold closes it uh, basically slides the side poles in to create Some posts in the side of the part. We also have a, a hydraulic core pole up here this blue hydraulic cylinder which is actually like a hydraulic jack cylinder I've got it hooked up to one of the core pull circuits, the hydraulic lines of this uh, molding machine, and I've got the core pull turned on. And this actually is a little different than normal. Normally a core pull piston pushes and pulls, but this one has a spring return. So a, there's only one hose going to it, and then there's a rigid spring that retracts the core pull when it's done. And then uh, over here, the mold's in the second position is the frame for this door that's in the first mold. So it's kind of a white ABS plastic frame. And it has a couple of interesting core pulls as well. These air cylinders, this one and that one, are uh, have two pins that push in when the mold closes. And that allows some, some side holes in the plastic part. And then before the mold opens, those air cylinders flip polarity and then they pop open 
and then the mold opens and then the parts eject. Okay, so this is our first side and I'm looking inside of there and things look clear. There are some little kind of BB things down in there, but that's not too big of a deal. So, okay, we're good here. I'll close this safety cage and then we'll check out the other one on the B side. We've also got plastic loaded in the hoppers, both of them, same material. Alright, we'll check back here. I do have a bit of a blob of plastic from where I purged last time, so we'll pull this out. And look inside of there, and things look good. Sorry for the horizontal. Okay, so I'll close this safety gate. Oh, and I'll double check the, the switch for these air side core pistons on the A side of the second mold with this guy. So when the carriage unit moves forward to engage the nozzle onto the back of the molding machine, I've got this switch which will trigger right here. Uh, because we're using compressed air instead of hydraulics, I need this switch to stay activated. The hydraulic core poles apply a signal for pumping oil and then they shut off, uh, but that won't work with the air cylinder. So anyway, that's how we're doing it. Hopefully that made sense. All right, I'm gonna close this gate. Our molds are up to temperature. Usually when you have your first shot, it doesn't always work out. So I have already run about 4,000 of these parts on these two molds. So, I mean, this is like uh, already been proven out. So I've already kind of dialed in the, the molding machine parameters. And usually when you start up, the first couple of parts don't behave well. Uh, and then once you get into the zone or out of the startup mode, then uh, this, both of these molds run autonomously. So let's uh, see how much fuss we have when we start up this, this molding run right now. So I'm going to go to semi-automatic mode after I clear all the errors. And I will hit the start button. I got the mold closing very slow uh, because of uh, concerns of the side poles not being aligned correctly. All right, there's the second injection unit injecting and it dumped all the way to zero. And the first one, which I didn't capture on video, is it is it 0.58 inches of cushion, which is pretty good. Oh, except it shows it. No, we're good. Yeah. So it'll start refilling. And then it's cooling down and then we'll open. All right. Well, that was the first shot. And we do have an undershot. Yeah, both parts have an undershot, which again is sometimes or usually normal when you're starting up. So let's shoot again. So I'm going to hit the, uh, oh, and I have a little red LED here that says that the, the core pin is retracted. See that little black dot or that black hole in the side of the mold? Well, we don't want that, that metal pin extended into the cavity when the B side closes on it. Otherwise, we will basically break the mold. So we don't want that. Anyway, so that's why I have this, this red light here. When the uh, piston activates, this red light will turn on and that tells me that I should not open or close the mold if this light is on. So I'm going to hit the start button. And then we can see how our mold very gently closes. Because we don't want the uh, side pole to get crashed. Here we're 
Oh, I'll have to show how that air cylinder or the pneumatic side pole activates as well. So there you see the red light is on, which means don't open the mold or close the mold until that light turns off, which means that the, the side pole pins on the second mold have retracted. And here we're refilling again. There the uh, light turned off and you heard that air cylinder retract the pins. And it's probably 500 pounds of force. All right. There we go. All right. So if we take a look at the side pole, it's a little greasy because it is a cam action. Actually, it's very greasy after several thousand cycles. But I did have problems with these breaking, so I've actually had to re-weld this and then add more of a base. And you'll see that when I make these, that uh, off camera, I had to do some uh, fixes to them. So they look pretty gnarly. You can see like, maybe you can even see some of my funky welding fixes. And I had to screw a support block on and everything. But anyway, that's the, uh, the side pull mechanism. So that's an angled hole there, which pulls the, the core out, which basically is just that tip there. And then on the other side of the mold, we've got a um, guide pin and a heel block with a wear plate on it. And then this, this block is an insert, that steel insert, that little assembly. It's actually bolted in the back with that uh, half 13 bolt or a 13 millimeter bolt. And then there's one on each side. Let's shoot again. Oh, and then up here is our, our little pneumatic core pole. And then there's a little, a little tab of metal that pops into that little half moon shape to create an undercut in this part, which has to retract before we open. Anyway, so let's do it again. I think this time we'll go to fully automatic mode, which means just continually go instead of a single cycle mode, which is this button. And the red light is off, so I'm going to hit start. Then we'll watch our controller do its thing. In the upper left corner, you can kind of see the real-time status. So right now, both injection units are, are packing plastic into the molds. And then one of them is refilling the injection unit or recharging the injection unit. The other one's still packing. Okay, you're gonna see the core pole symbol open pretty soon here uh, after the chilling. That little snowflake means chilling. And that means the hydraulic core pole is retracted and now the mold opens. And the hydraulic core pole is that blue thing. There's a little hydraulic cylinder in the middle of that, that blue cylinder housing, which pushes down maybe one and a half millimeters or so, which pushes a little uh, a core pole or a, uh, a, a undercutting core feature in the B side of this mold. So right now we're, one injection unit is still packing and the other one is filling. You can see the upper left hand corner, there's little icons to tell you what's happening. And then the carriage unit retracted, which triggered the air cylinder core pulls on the second mold to release. Now we're chilling and that's the air, or the, the A side core pull opening. Eject our parts off, and there they go.
There we uh, activate the sensor or the switch to engage the core pole again. And now we're filling the shot with the injection unit screw. And this is a full shot on this second ejection unit. Almost a full shot. And then we retract it, or we pulled back and then release the switch for the air cylinder on the side pole. Eject. Maybe I'll zoom in so we can see the actual hole where the pin is with that pancake air cylinder, the dual acting pancake. That's just a heater block that I have sitting on top of the mold. I think it's screwed in, and the one's definitely screwed in on the bottom. And then there's one on the front side too, left and right. Don't make those yourself. Just buy them off the shelf. Disclaimer. <laughs> All right, let's see where the what the hole in the pin retracted looks like on the opposite side of the A side of this. Second mold. Yeah, you can see that little, that little hole right there, which creates a hole in the part. And then the air cylinder just pushed the pins in and injects. And that's it. So things are working out pretty good. So we're going to close the mold super slow right here. And this is because those side poles, I've had issues with them breaking in the past. So I reduced the mold protection pressure all the way down and I've got it closing as slow as possible to such that the, the guide pin will line up with the hole in the side core pole for, that's on the A side. Uh, what was happening is uh, one out of a thousand times before I redid those core poles, the guide pin wouldn't line up with the hole for some reason, and the pin would just bend over and uh, break off the whole back of the core pole. And that's partially due to I didn't have the mold protection pressure low enough. I had to dig deeper into the settings of the molding machine. And I also had the core, or the sliding back of the core pole was was basically cantilevered on an edge. So it, uh, it was acting like a big shear. So there you can see how slowly and carefully it's closing the mold. So I basically machined away the cantilever part and backed it with a solid block of steel. Uh, that's the, uh, the sliding core pole and that helped out. So here we can actually do a test to see how effective the mold protection is. And mold protection is basically the molding machine is monitoring the amount of force required to close the mold. And it's looking to see if there's a part stuck or some other obstruction uh, between the mold faces that prevents the mold from closing correctly, usually resulting in mold damage. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll stick a piece of plastic tubing across the mold here and we'll see how well the mold protection does. All right, so we're gonna test the mold protection that I was just talking about. And I've got this plastic tubing here. This is just polyethylene uh, quarter inch with like a eighth inch hole in the middle. And I'm gonna lay this plastic tubing across our uh, mold face. And the idea is if, uh, the, hopefully the molding machine will sense that there's some tubing there prior to it completely closing and locking up with two 250 tons of force. Ideally, it'll only apply maybe 300 pounds of force before it knows that there's some obstruction. And I've got the tubing in a safe place. In fact, I think this is one I used to test before. So let's, let's try closing on that tubing. 
and I'm going to I'm just going to manually close and I'm checking that I'm all clear to do this. Okay, so I'm going to do a mold close. And it's slowed down and it's sensing and sensing and oh, it did close on it. <laughs> all right, well that tubing wasn't strong enough uh, for the molding machine to sense. So now we've got super flat tubing. So ideally the molding machine would stop before it turns it into, into a shim stock, but it didn't in this case. But the, the, the thought is, is, or the issue is that this molding machine is so large with 250 tons of force that it, it can't sense when there's small things obstructing it. Maybe we'll try again upside down like this. We're still clear of any kind of danger area. So we'll see if the molding machine will sense that longer piece of tubing. All right, that's a better angle of what's happening. So manually, I'm going to close this mold again and, and we'll see what happens. Okay, we slow way down and it's sensing for too much back pressure. All right, so there the, the mold basically stopped and the machine is still pushing, but it only, it has a very small amount of hydraulic pressure for this, for this portion of travel of the mold. Uh, now previously when you saw how it was going slow and then it kind of sped up, that was the, the lockup of high pressure mode. But we never got there because that tube is preventing this mold from closing in the low pressure safe con uh, position of the travel. So let's open the mold back up and it, it just wouldn't let us do it. Uh, but it did automatically do the eject. So anyway, that's mold protection. And it's a good idea to do that so that you don't wind up having to remake your side poles when your cam pin doesn't fit into that hole because your side puller is a little off alignment. Anyway, so quick lesson on mold protection. All right, let's keep this thing running. Uh, when I was screwing around with the molds, I'd do a quick check to make sure there's no major screw ups. And then we start in automatic mode. And again, you'll see how the machine slows way down to sense for any obstructions. And it's happy with it, so it locks up fully. And this toggle plate back here, which is hard to see through the reflection, uh, basically pushes totally forward at that point. Thanks for watching Dragonfly Engineering.